Welcome to the Derek Diamond Experience podcast, where every week I take a look inside the world of film and television with those who have lived it and experienced it. I am your host, Derek Diamond, and happy holiday season, everyone. It is, as I do this special live show, it is December 2nd of 2020. It's crazy to think that this insane year is almost finally over. On one hand, it feels like the longest year ever. But really, it's been going by pretty quickly, at least for you know my personal perspective, it has been. I know when things really started to get crazy with COVID, it seemed like March to July just kind of crawled and seemed like it was never going to end. But honestly, the, the last, since July, it seems like the year's gone by pretty quickly. And shout out to Carlos Longoria, who is watching live here on Facebook. Yes, yeah, so I thought, and if it's crazy because it feels like forever since I've done an actual episode of the show because I've been trying to batch record interviews so that way I have them in the can and I don't have to worry about them. I mean, if I could, I would do a live show every single week, but I know with work and other people's schedules and everything, it's a little difficult to do that. So over the last month or two, I've been trying to batch record shows so that way... if week comes along that I can't really record anything, I have something in the can. Well, that same thing happened in mid-November when I actually went to uh, California on vacation with my girlfriend. Um, we went for her birthday, and she had never been out there before, so we spent a week out there, and before that, I wanted to make sure to get you know enough episodes in the can to where I didn't have to worry about it. And between this and doing Nerd Cave Retro, it felt like, honestly, longer than a month since I've done a podcast. I mean, I think the actual time was like two to three weeks, but it, it felt like forever. You know, if you get out of doing this, and it's like that with most things, you get out of doing things for a while, it, it's, it can be a little, little much to, to get back into it. But hopefully those who are watching live on Facebook are doing great. Hopefully you guys had a good Thanksgiving and those listening and watching on the download as well. Hopefully you guys had a good Thanksgiving. I know that for me, it was a good time to kind of step away from work for a few days to recharge, spend time with family, spend time with my girlfriend. It's been, it was a good Thanksgiving break. And I know things are kind of starting to, uh, to wind down here as far as, you know, work goes and, you know, we're still still doing the podcast thing. I've actually got some cool shows coming up uh, in the next few weeks. I know with the um, the Patreon poll uh, for December, The Office actually won. So I'll be doing a roundtable discussion on The Office later on this month. Got a couple of cool holiday-themed interviews. And uh, might close out the year with, uh, with some Star Wars. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. But for this episode, I, I kind of wanted to kick off the holiday season officially uh, because Christmas is my favorite time of year, which is weird because you wouldn't really think of me as a festive person. And uh, Carlos, thank you for the compliment on the, the decorations. For those who are watching the video version, I made a cool little uh, um, overlay for this episode. But I knew I wanted to do some type of Christmas-themed episode. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get any interviews. And the the top five list, for those who might be new to the show, back during really March to June, I think, was the time that it aired. But I was working remotely, meaning working from home every day. And I had made the joke that if we're working at home, I'm going to do a podcast every single day. Well, I wound up doing that pretty much every day between March and June with a morning show that I did called The Daily Diamond. And it initially it started as things that I would suggest you do as far as like watching movies, TV shows during the pandemic. Well, that lasted for about a week. And I just randomly decided, hey, I'm going to do a top five list. And it really caught on. And that was what the show became where every Monday through Friday, we would name a random top five list. People would send in suggestions. And it was it was really cool to interact with everyone because it got to where a decent amount of people were watching every morning before they would go to work or they would start their day. And 
that's what I loved about doing that show was the interaction with the audience. So I wanted to incorporate that occasionally into this podcast. It's still mostly interview based, but at the same time, I had so much fun doing it. I wanted to do it, you know, hopefully like, you know, once a month or once every couple of months. Carlos says, I've missed the top fives. Yeah, I, I do too. If I were still working at home and, and had the time, I would absolutely do it. I, I love doing the Daily Diamond so much. So what for those who have never watched the Daily Diamond and you haven't seen a top five episode of this show, this is how it works. I submit a say, hey, we're going to be discussing top five. In this case, it's top five Christmas movies. And I want to get into the discussion of what is a Christmas movie here in a second. But um, anyway, I list my top five. And you can post on Facebook, whether it's in the chat or um, on a thread that I post earlier in the day, what are your top five lists? And I will read them on the show. It, it makes for really good conversation just because I, I love looking at everyone's varying lists. Like some will have the same entrance, but they'll be in a different order or it might be something completely different. That's the beauty of the top five list. And I'm, I've said this before, but I'm a huge fan of the Watch Mojo YouTube channel where they do top 10 list. And occasionally I've done top 10 list on the show too. And I know at some point early next year, I want to do uh, top movies of 2020. And it might be a little more difficult to do because of the pandemic and we haven't had that many theatrical releases. So I'll probably end up doing a top five for that. But I, I want to ask this to the chat because I've noticed we've got some more people watching. What is a Christmas movie to you? Like, say, for example, one of my favorites is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the cartoon version. But it's less than 30 minutes long. So do you count that as a Christmas movie or do you count it as a special like the old claymation uh, movies, like with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Year Without a Santa Claus, movies like that, do you count those as movies or do you count them as specials, as their own separate category? I personally classify them as they're not full-length movies, but if someone were to put them in a list, I would have no issue with that. Now, for argument's sake, I did do two separate lists. But if you guys, um, I know some of you just submitted one, which is perfectly fine. And those who are watching live, if you want to throw in your top five list, or if you just want to name off your um, your favorite Christmas movie, then oh, Carlos says I would still count them. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. But um, yeah, if anybody who's watching, like I said, feel free to throw your options in the chat, and I will read them on the show. Also, and this will be a good discussion too. Do you consider non-traditional Christmas movies Christmas movies? For example, like Die Hard is the big debate. And I've seen people just take this way too seriously on the internet, specifically Facebook, where someone will say, oh, Die Hard is my favorite Christmas movie. And they lose their mind because they don't think it's a Christmas movie. But where I would say that it does count, and this to me is what classifies a Christmas movie, if the movie takes place at Christmas time and Christmas is essential to the plot, I think it classifies as a Christmas movie. If it just takes place at Christmas but doesn't really have anything to do with the actual holiday or it's you know not incorporated in any way, then I don't count it as a Christmas movie. So movies like Die Hard, uh, Batman Returns, I think Kiss Kiss Bang Bang took place around Christmas time as well. I, I classify them as like a subgenre of Christmas. Uh, Tanya Richter says, "LOL, Die Hard, what?" So I'm I'm getting I'm making my point here. You look at Zombieland; it's very clearly a comedy, but it has horror elements. So do you call it a horror movie, even though there are very clearly some funny and comedic moments that happen throughout that movie? Same thing with Shaun of the Dead. I classify it as a subgenre of horror and comedy. So movies like Die Hard, like Batman Returns, I'm okay with listing them as as Christmas movies. They're non-traditional, but Zombieland is a non-traditional horror movie. I look at it exactly the same way. 
But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that if you want to throw them uh, in the chat. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right through and I'm going to... Oh, Carlos mentions Krampus. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has to do with you know, a different country's iteration of Christmas, but I'd still classify it as a subgenre of a Christmas movie. And then you, you could get into subgenres of subgenres, but that's a, that's a discussion for a different podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list uh, my top five Christmas specials and then top five Christmas movies. And then after that, we'll get into your guys' list. And I'll mention some things that are coming up uh, later on this month and hopefully into 2021 with, uh, with the podcast. So Christmas specials, I only had one honorable mention, and that is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's probably the most known of what I call the claymation Christmas specials. But... um. Uh, Lisa, I'll get to your question uh, here in just a second. Uh, <laughs> Don says, damn Germans. Uh, that's funny. Um, but I, I put uh, Rudolph, just as an honorable mention, it's the first one I remember seeing, and it's one of the most known. But there are others that I like a little bit better. I Don't get me wrong, I like the the movie overall. I love the Yukon Cornelius character. I love The Abominable Snowman has taken that movie, but it, it just misses the mark for me as far as being... If this were a top 10, it would probably be like 7. I, I would throw in um, Santa Claus is Coming to Town as as one in there too, as an honorable mention. But number 5, and some of you might leave the chat whenever I say this, but I had to throw it on there. I enjoy watching it every year, so... Uh, it's, it's one of my favorites and that is the Sonic the Hedgehog animated Christmas special called Sonic Christmas Blast. Um, it was actually meant to be the finale of the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series. For those who grew up in the nineties, you might remember there were two different Sonic cartoons that aired at the same time. You had Sonic the Hedgehog, which was a darker show, and then you had Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was a bit more slapstick, a little more childish, but uh, in this uh, in this Christmas special, it felt like a little bit of the hybrid of the two because there were some of the you know sound effects and looks from the um, Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, but not Adventures. But they used the characters and their mannerisms from Adventures, so it was a little bit of a, a hybrid, but between the two, but. Um, I, I like this story, one, just because I'm a Sonic fan, and I, I thought it was you know, cool watching you know those characters one last time. But the story is essentially Robotnik kidnaps Santa Claus and takes his place, becoming Robotnik Claus. And instead of Santa giving presents to everyone, everyone gives presents to Robotnik. Uh, Carlos says, I've never seen the Sonic Christmas, didn't even know it existed. Yeah, just, I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but uh, it's called Sonic Christmas Blast. And it, it's it's pretty good. It, it's definitely worth watching. I, I very much enjoy it. But um, it, it's definitely a little more on the childish side, but I'm a Sonic fan, so I'm not going to bash it. My number four is Year Without a Santa Claus. It's my favorite of the Claymations simply because of the Miser Brothers. I love the Snow Miser song. I love the rebuttal from Heat Miser. I know it sounds crazy to put it you know, in a top five specifically for that reason, but those characters are just so funny. And it, it's it's got a good story to it as well. I mean, I... I wouldn't call the Claymations cookie cutter by any means, because to me, they all had very distinct stories. But I, I like the the Year Without a Santa Claus story. Number three is Frosty the Snowman. Happy birthday. Uh, it's It came out, I think, around the same time as the... Well, no, I, I think Frosty was a, a, a little bit recent, or more recent. But um, it, it's in the traditional animation style. Frosty the Snowman is one of my favorite Christmas characters. And, of course, he says, you know, 
Don't you cry. I'll be back again someday. Uh, great ending to the to the cartoon. And it had a little bit of a darker tone to it because, spoiler alert, Frosty gets trapped in a greenhouse and he melts, but he ends up coming back, so it's okay. Number two is A Charlie Brown Christmas, something that I make it a point to watch every year. I even have a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, the the scrawny looking beat up one with the one red ornament hanging off the side of it. I've had it since I've lived on my own. Um, Snoopy, as you can see from the shirt I'm wearing, is one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time. Uh, it's just got a, a good, it, it's well put together and it's got a good message to it. I know that some people don't like it because they feel like the religious aspects of it are a little too on the nose, but I personally have no problem with it. I, I love the Charlie Brown Christmas special. But number one, and if this were an overall list, it would be my number one overall. That is the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas cartoon special with the golden pipes of Boris Karloff as the narrator and really the Grinch too. I watch this every Christmas Eve and don't get me wrong. I like the live action version a lot with Jim Carrey, but there's something about this original Grinch story and people make the joke that I'm a Grinch too, because I, I duplicate some of his mannerisms in a joking way, but you know, I, I love the story of, you know, it teaches so many important lessons. It teaches you of letting go of your anger and learning what Christmas is really all about, that it's not the presents. It's about spending time with friends, spending time with family and appreciating, you know, their company and what you have. And it's the, the quote, and it's one of my favorite quotes from really any Christmas special or anything that I've watched as far as TV or film is that maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. As I take a sip of my coffee here. But, you know, everything, I think the animation style still holds up, even though this it was made many, many years ago. I love the soundtrack, the You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch is... To me, one of the most iconic cartoon songs in, not cartoon songs, but Christmas songs. Well, cartoon songs too, but Christmas songs ever made. And I just, I love everything about it. I love Boris Karloff's voice. I love the score, the soundtrack, the look of it. I love the Grinch character and his redemption. And of course, his dog, Max, who doesn't love a dog? Uh, oh, Tanya says, now you're way too nice. I, I appreciate that. I, I like to I like to have fun with that though. I mean, the Grinch is one of my favorite characters in really any medium. I, I love the the redemption arc that he has. Um, I, she also says, just notice most Christmas movies I grew up with in Europe were kind of dark, and, and that's something that I I still need. I've got to catch up more on foreign films. I I know I'm not very good about that, but I I will. I'll believe you on that. Oh, Carlos says, uh, let me go back up here in the chat. Now there needs to be a horror movie based on Rudolph and they call it Red Nose because it's a bloody horror. I love it. Um, I'm actually going to look one thing up real quick to answer Lisa's question. I apologize for the delay on that. So she asked me, do I consider Last Holiday a Christmas film? Now, I will preface it by saying I've never seen Last Holiday. I know it's, yes, yeah, got Queen Latifah, and it uh, is loosely based on the 1950 British film of the same name. Um, Honestly, and I hate to cop out on the question, but I, I would have to watch it. I, I've seen it on Christmas movie lists, so I know people do consider it that. But I've personally never seen it. I knew of it, but I I just I haven't seen it. Um, let's see. Oh, we've got uh, Carlos said Jess's top five. We'll uh, let me copy and paste that because I've mentioned this before on one of the last live shows I did. For some reason, when I'm watching the live feed, I can't scroll up on the chat. So if I don't catch it almost right away, I, I'm not 
I'm not going to see it, unfortunately. It, it used to not be that way, but let me just uh, copy and paste that real quick. All right, so we're going to move on to my top five Christmas films as far as what I would call feature-length movies. So honorable mentions, there's quite a bit. Uh, Scrooged, it's a movie I really like. This would probably be my number six. I love Bill Murray. I will watch him in anything. And I love the modern spin on the Christmas Carol story because that story has been adapted so many times by so many different filmmakers, um, you know, television makers. I, I'd classify them as the same category. But uh, it, anyway, it's been made into a visual medium so many times that to do something to give it that breath of fresh air I thought was was great. And like I said, you can't go wrong with Bill Murray. So Scrooge is an honorable mention. The original Santa Claus with Tim Allen, I watched that movie numerous times as a kid. Uh, the original Home Alone, and you might be shocked that it's in the honorable mention, but I will get to my reason why in, here in just a second. The 2000 version of The Grinch, uh, the live-action one with Jim Carrey that I mentioned before, and Elf with Will Ferrell. I remember that came out at a time that no one really thought that Will Ferrell could be a lead, uh, a leading actor, and he proved them wrong, and it's one of his best movies. Though I do find that movie to be a bit polarizing because I know people that love it, and I know people that say they hate it and they can't stand when it's on TV. I'm like I I personally like the movie so uh, number five this is a, a fun one that I had uh, going back and revisiting last Christmas and that would be Jingle All the Way with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad fighting over a Turbo Man doll and for you Star Wars fans Jake Lloyd who played the child version of Anakin Skywalker is in this movie as Arnold's son it's very over the top. And but I think the thing is like the those who made the movie knew it was over the top and they own it. If it's if you're gonna go over the top, you got to go all the way with it. And I it was it still holds up to me to a point. Uh, it's dated, but at the same time, I still had a lot of fun going back and watching it. Uh, but my number four, this is my non traditional choice. That would be Batman Returns, and you might be thinking, Batman Returns isn't a Christmas movie. It takes place during Christmas. There are multiple plot points where Christmas is involved, especially the Christmas party where Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle dance together and they realize who is who. Uh, and Carlos says, yeah, uh, Jingle All the Way is a fun movie. I'm going to watch it again uh, before Christmas. I, I, I want to say I purchased it with um, on iTunes. Or if not, then I'll find somewhere to rent it. But um, yeah, not traditional choice. The Christmas party that Max Shrek throws um, is a pivotal point. The Christmas you know, get-together ceremonies in Gotham play pivotal points. So I would put it in the Christmas subgenre. It's a movie that honestly I remember not liking as much when I was younger, but I've gone back recently and watched it and realized how good of a movie it actually is. It's a little Tim Burton heavy, but it's still a very, very good movie. I, I love both the Tim Burton Batman movies. A lot of people consider this to be the, the superior one. So I, I think just from the Christmas aspect to it, to it just being... A good action movie. I like Michael Keaton's portrayal as Batman. I like the choices of both Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer as Penguin and Catwoman. You can't go wrong with Christopher Walken playing Christopher Walken as Max Shrek. Uh, but uh, no, Batman Returns is a fun movie, and it's it's my number four. My number three is Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. And I feel like I'm always in the minority when I say that I actually liked Home Alone 2 more so than I did the the original one. And I love the original one, but I liked how everything was on a bigger scale when he was lost in New York. Him staying in the hotel with... And I love Tim Curry as the, the, the bellhop from that movie. It's the role that I always think of him. A lot of people think of Rocky Horror Picture Show, but I instantly go to Home Alone 2. Uh, the traps are bigger everything's just on a bigger scale and I, I love the 
the callback to the original movie when they play the when Kevin plays the um I, I'll get to your quote in a second, Carlos, but um yeah, the the callback to the original movie when uh, Kevin plays the gangster film with all the gunshots and the, all the hotel staff fall for it. It's just so funny. I, I, I love the original two Home Alone movies, but Home Alone 2 edges it out for me as my number three. But uh, Carlos quotes Batman Returns, You said you were going to scare her. She looked pretty scared to me. I love Danny DeVito as the Penguin. I, I would be okay if they bring the Penguin back. I, I mean, I know Colin Farrell's playing him, but Man, for this Flash movie, if they got... Well, no, he's dead, so never mind. That wouldn't happen. But it would be cool to see Danny DeVito play the Penguin again, is my point. But um, my number two is A Christmas Carol, specifically the George C. Scott version. And I love the Muppet Christmas Carol, and it's widely regarded as possibly the best iteration of A Christmas Carol. This one is my number two for more so sentimental reasons, because... As a kid, I watched this movie every Christmas with my grandma, and she passed away uh, four years ago. But this and The Ten Commandments were two movies that we would watch every year. We watched Ten Commandments for Easter and this version of A Christmas Carol for Christmas. And I thought for it being, you know, a made-for-TV production, I... I enjoyed it. You know, David Warner shows up as Bob Cratchit. He's very good in that role. I thought everyone who played their role did it very well. It's a very well acted version of A Christmas Carol, which, you know, can't be said for a lot of them. Uh, yeah, Tanya says, I love me some Muppets. Yeah, the, the Muppet Christmas Carol is is great. It's one that, you know, I kind of rediscovered a couple of years ago after not watching it for a long time, but I, I love I love the Muppets Christmas. Carol. It would be it would be an honorable mention for me, but um, yeah, it's if I could include multiple takes of a Christmas Carol, it would probably be number four. It'd be three or four on my list, and then Jingle All the Way would get would get bumped down. But number one, and I am ashamed to say that this is a movie that I did not watch until I was an adult. I did not grow up with this movie, but I know a lot of people did. And it's a lot of people's favorites. And it's my number one as far as the feature length movies go. If this was an overall list, it would be my number two. But it's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. How can you go wrong with it? You have Chevy Chase, who was one of the great comedic actors of his time. Just following this, you know, over the top Griswold family as they're trying to find a Christmas tree and they invite everyone over for Christmas. And God help me, I would kill myself if that many people were staying in my house at the same time for that period of time. Um, it's and of course, you know, Randy Quaid to me is the the one who makes that movie. So many great quotes you know, just like my, my favorite, I mean, besides the obvious shitters full from, from Randy Quaid, but this, the rant that Chevy Chase does after he gets the Jelly of the Month Club membership from work and just the venom that comes out of him is just awesome, awesome filmmaking to watch. It, it's, it's so, so good. I, I love that movie. Um, I need to watch it fairly soon. Definitely watch it before Christmas. But um, that's going to do it for my two lists. Um, it was actually kind of fun doing a, a, a two for one as far as movies and specials go. I, I originally made an overall one, but I figured for argument's sake that I would do um, that I would do two. So we're going to get into everyone's list here. Oh, Carlos, where's the Tylenol? <laughs> Uh, all right, so first up, we have Samantha Owens, number five, A Christmas Carol, number four, The Christmas Shoes, which I have never seen, um, number three is Home Alone, number two, The Santa Claus, which was actually on uh, TV right before I started doing the show, and number one, both The Grinch films. It is tough to pick because 
I really like the live action version. I like that they came up with a bit more of a backstory for the Grinch to explain why he's so salty towards the Who's. I I did enjoy the, I think it came out two years ago, the CG animated Grinch movie. I think DreamWorks did it with Benedict Cumberbatch's The Grinch. It it was enjoyable. It's definitely on the the bottom of my list compared to the other two. But um, I I should have mentioned this too, uh, but Tanya says, by the way, I'm German for whoever reported what I said as hate speech, but I will filter myself more. Um, Did you get reported for hate speech? I didn't see that. Uh, So let's go to your guys' list here. So uh, Carlos had put this in the chat, but... um, uh, his girlfriend Jess's top five, uh, Yogi Bear's First Christmas, and I'm reading this from bottom to top, The Grinch, Christmas Vacation, Frosty the Snowman, and Charlie Brown Christmas. I haven't seen the Yogi Bear uh, First Christmas. I-, I know a lot of those cartoons do Christmas episodes as far as when they're serious. Because I know like a lot of the Nickelodeon shows back in the day, like Rocco's Modern Life did a really good Christmas episode. Uh, the Doug one, really all of them were good, but I, I remember Rugrats did a Hanukkah special because the family was Jewish, and that was not necessarily a shock to me, but I had never watched a Hanukkah special. They did do a Christmas special, if I remember correctly, but um, I remember that being like, oh wow, they're actually doing something that's, you know, it's a holiday, but it's not Christmas related. Uh, so I remember being a little shocked by that. But let's go to your guys' list here. Uh, da, 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 da. Go to Messenger, because I know Wade pulled his up. All right, so um, the, the reason why I mentioned the conversation earlier about what classifies and not classifies as Christmas movie, Wade actually brought it up because he messaged me uh, his list, but he said to him he puts them in two separate categories. So... His personal top five are as follows. Number five, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, Four, Home Alone. Three, Die Hard. So he does consider it a uh, a Christmas movie. Number two, A Christmas Story. Um, I I haven't watched A Christmas Story in many years. I know that it's on TV every, like, all day during Christmas Day. I shouldn't say every day during Christmas Day because not every day is Christmas. And then a number one is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So let's go to our list here. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, for those who are watching live, if you haven't submitted your list, just drop them in the chat and I will read them. Uh, Because that's... uh, It's it's the fun part about these shows, is just the the interaction. So, uh, Carlos Longoria, his honorable mentions are Scrooged, Edward Scissorhands. I actually didn't think about that movie. Trading Places was another one that uh, was mentioned as a Christmas movie. Uh, Home Alone and Christmas Chronicles. Number five, Batman Returns. I feel you on that one. Four, Jingle All the Way. Three is Elf. Two, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And number one is Die Hard. Uh, first time that we've seen uh, Elf be listed that high, or really listed at all. Because like I said, it was a very polarizing movie. For some reason, I, I think people take things a little too seriously myself. But that's a discussion for another time. Brandon Rutledge, he has two different lists. He has, um, well, I'll do his short films, TV specials first. Honorable mentions, any of the Rankin-Bass specials not listed below. Flintstone's Christmas Carol and Shrek the Halls. I haven't seen Shrek the Halls yet. I haven't seen that. Um, I want to say, did Toy Story do a Christmas special? I know they did something for Halloween, I believe. I can't remember if they did a Christmas special or not. But his number five is Prep and Landing. I haven't seen that yet either. Uh, Four, The Year Without a Santa Claus. Three, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Number two, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And number one is A Charlie Brown Christmas. I forgot to mention earlier, but the thing with Charlie Brown Christmas, I love the songs, the the soundtrack from the Charlie Brown Christmas special. From, I believe it's called O Tannenbaum, the slow piano medley. 
just hearing that instantly makes me think of snow and drinking a, a cup of hot chocolate. But anything from, you know, the, the whole, that whole special is, is really good to me. Uh, let's see. Tanya Richter. I'm adding Last Christmas as a movie since I love George Michael and it had a lot of his songs with the Mother of Dragons in the main role. It was cute. Um, I've seen that mentioned a few times uh, when I was looking up, you know, essentially doing research for the show. Um, that came up quite a few times. Oh, she says, I can, I can sing it for you. We'll, we'll hold that next uh, massage appointment I have. We'll, uh, we'll make that happen. And that's a revelation, too, is she is my massage therapist, who I've been seeing since I was in college, which seems like a long, long, long time ago. But, again, that's I, I won't bash my age too much. I know you guys don't want to hear that. Um yeah, Jim Hammond asks, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Again, I, I say it is because it incorporates elements of Christmas and uses them as a driving force. Same thing with Gremlins. I mean, Gizmo was a Christmas gift. That, to me alone, makes it a Christmas movie. Which, granted, that that's... I, I'm learning, like, and that's one another reason why I like doing these lists is that it reminds me of movies that I haven't seen in a long time or that I haven't just sat down and watched yet. So that's another reason why I like doing these. But yeah, I, I would consider Die Hard to be a Christmas movie. Um, let's see. Any other lists for those who are watching? I know we've got we've got quite a few people watching live and uh, for those who are watching live uh, what I'm going to be doing with these live shows from now on is uh, I'm still going to be doing them when I get the chance to but uh, with Nerd Cave Retro moving to Thursdays starting in January any live show that I do I'm going to do Wednesday evening probably around this time 6 maybe 6.30 and then the audio version will be put out on you know Apple Podcasts, everywhere you get podcasts, and then the video version will be posted on YouTube. Well, then, if you miss the live feed, then you miss it because it's going to be gone. It'll be deleted after um, it, it's broadcast live on Facebook. So, um, very, very minor change, but hey, it's all good. Um, but as far as things coming up uh, for this podcast, um, I mentioned earlier that um, I'll be doing an office roundtable. Uh, because it won the Patreon poll for this month. So I'll be doing that. Um, I might do that show live. I'm not entirely sure yet. Depends on um, everybody's schedule. I'll have to uh, check on that. But I'll also be interviewing a couple of actors who have been in different Christmas movies. So we'll be talking about you know, the experience making that. Maybe, heck, I might ask them you know, their favorite Christmas movie. We'll, uh, we'll just have to see. But um, I think we're going to end the year because the Mandalorian will be concluding its new season uh, in a couple of weeks. As of this recording, there's only three episodes left. Um, so the last one will air, I believe, December 24th. I wonder if I think they're, they're putting it out that uh, Thursday for Christmas Eve. I know I want to do a, a breakdown of that show. But it's also the 40-year anniversary of my favorite movie of all time, that being The Empire Strikes Back. So what I think I might be doing is to close out 2020. It would be kind of like how we closed out 2019 when we did the, the Star Wars, um, the trilogy of episodes, and then we reviewed Rise of Skywalker to open 2020. What I think I'm going to do is close out the year with a discussion on The Empire Strikes Back, and then kick off 2021 with a discussion of The Mandalorian. So, uh, okay, Tanya says, 40 years, oh my God, I was 10. Yeah, it's crazy to think that movie, like now when we refer to the 80s, they're 40 years ago. And I feel it too, because the 90s are now 30 years ago. We're, we're all getting old. Every single person in this chat, we're all getting old. But um, yeah, it's um, some good things coming up uh, with the podcast. I know in February we'll have Pensacon, so hope to be doing Pensacon month again where I speak with different guests who will be at the convention. 
Uh, and some other good anniversaries of movies coming up in 2021. I know that uh, Twister is one that I'm actually looking forward to. To me, that is one of the best movies of the 90s. Uh, it'll be the 20-year anniversary of uh, the Smallville series, which I've been going back and re-watching and been having a lot of fun doing that. And um, yeah, so a lot of, lot of fun stuff coming up for the pie. Oh, my mother, Donna Diamond, has joined, and she has listed her um, uh, her list. Uh, she said, my favorite is A Christmas Carol, specifically the George Scott version. Yeah, I mentioned that one earlier. We always watch Home Alone 1 and 2 and Die Hard. Your Aunt Joe watches It's a Wonderful Life every year without fail. Yeah, so uh, she mentioned earlier, and I, I'm, I'm sorry I missed that, but she mentioned that It's a Wonderful Life is her favorite Christmas movie. I've never watched it. I confess I have not seen It's a Wonderful Life, and I know it's one of the most iconic movies ever made, but um, I've just never sat down and watched it. Like, I know the general idea of the story, and I know, you know, about the ending of, you know, an angel gets its wings, that quote and everything, but I've just never sat down and, and watched the, the full movie. But probably going to have to change that for, uh, for this year. Especially since I get the week of Christmas off, which is, which is nice. So, um, yeah, as always, uh, if, if no one else has any, um, any other lists they want to throw out there, then I'm probably going to go ahead and call this an episode. Yeah, no, I haven't watched it. I apologize. I will, I, I will rectify that, uh, before Christmas. I will watch It's a Wonderful Life. Like I said, I know it's one of the most iconic movies ever made, but um, I'll 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 take some time to watch it for sure. But yeah, hopefully you guys had fun watching this uh, this top five list. At some point in January, I'm probably gonna do a top five uh, mo uh, movies of 2020, which is gonna be a bit interesting because theaters shut down in March. But there's been plenty of movies. Uh, that have been streaming that that have been good so i will uh i'll be back for sure doing a live show in january doing uh top five movies of 2020 but uh as always stay tuned to uh social media to find out what's coming up for the show uh, you can follow me on social media at d diamond podcast on facebook twitter and instagram if you want to subscribe to the show uh it's on really anywhere you get your podcast apple podcast stitcher spotify Oh, Carlos, thank you so much for, for watching. See you in a bit, or for those who are watching live, see you in a bit for Nerd Cave Retro. Um, and of course, thank you as always to the Unicorn Wranglers, my good friends uh, from the Unicorn Wranglers, uh, for providing the theme music for the podcast. You can check out all their music on Apple Music, Google Play, and Spotify. And rumor has it they will be coming out with a new album fairly soon. I know they've been working on it for a while uh, that should be coming out fairly soon. I don't want to give a concrete release date, but um, it'll be sometime soon. So that means the theme song will change for uh, for the show as well, because uh, I always love incorporating their music. Oh, and uh, Tanya, thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, for those, if I don't speak to, to you guys before then, I uh, hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Be sure to tune in, uh, you know, over the next several weeks for uh, some more fun episodes uh, here on the podcast. As I said, some fun Christmas interviews, an office roundtable that'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks. And thank you guys, as always, for the support. Because if it weren't for you guys, there would be no Derek Diamond experience. I love, you know, the feedback that I get from you guys, the suggestions on shows to do, people to interview. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, and also, if you want to check out uh, my Patreon. You can head over to patreon.com slash ddiamondpodcast. Some of the benefits of that include um, early access to episodes, voting on monthly show topics, and the opportunity to ask guests of my show questions. So if you've ever listened to any interview that I've done and you're like, why didn't Derek ask that? Now you have the chance to. So you can head over to patreon.com slash ddiamondpodcast to check out the tiers for that. And I believe that's going to do it for this week's show. So enjoy the rest of your week. Have a safe and fun weekend. Have a great holiday season. And we'll see you guys back here next week for another awesome episode of the Derek Diamond Experience Podcast. 